Well, good morning, everybody. It's uh, hard to believe we're in the middle of April and we've just finished uh, practice 12. We have three practices left. Uh, we'll have a, a pretty good one tomorrow on Wednesday, and then we still have to have on, on Friday one more uh, non-padded t-shirts and shorts and helmet practice, and then we'll finish up on Saturday uh, a combination of a practice and a little bit of scrimmage. But uh, uh, it's going well uh, so far. Obviously, it's a work in progress uh, every day. Uh, every day I'm learning a little bit more about uh, a position or a young man. Um, I, they're practicing hard. We're, we're learning. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take time. Uh, I think all of us coaches, and I think the players understand that as well, but we have seen tremendous improvement from you know, 1 to 4, 4 to 8, and 8 to 12. So we're making strides. It's just uh, it, it, we got to look at the big picture and understand that, uh, you know, for instance, on defense, they're not going to go against that type of an offense a whole lot during uh, the season. And so um, there's some times that um, I think we're trying to maybe stop some plays that we maybe won't be seeing uh, in some formations, but I still think it's good. We're focusing on communication on both sides of the ball. Uh, we're actually going to incorporate some noise tomorrow uh, to help on both sides of that end. Uh, for the first time with some silent counts and things. So uh, situational football, we're continuing to uh, emphasize a little bit, but we're still big picture with all the schemes offensively and defensively. So with that, we'll open up for questions. Well, at that time, we were, we were always trying to move guys around. So we were looking at a couple of guys at another position um, just because we're still trying to maximize the talent we have. And so uh, I took a couple of guys with one of our GAs, and we just kind of went through some basic uh, um, run and pass fits. But uh, I, I still enjoy doing that. Uh, if I can lend a hand to Coach Kleinerman, Coach Malone, Coach Hayes, those three guys I'm going to, um, I I listen on, on, on the defensive conversations. Uh, I'm involved with them, so I think the, the players know that they can come to me and say, hey, coach, what do I do on this? And, and uh, it's a balancing act because I still like to have fun with those offensive guys, but sometimes they hear me probably cheering for the defense just because I'm trying to coach a little bit. Yeah, it's an experiment right now. Uh, DJ did some really good things uh, on a tackling circuit that we had uh, from a special teams point of view and so um, we wanted to give him an opportunity just to see where he would be you know I don't know if that'll happen uh, wholesale for the fall but we thought with uh, uh, three or four practices left we'd give him an opportunity so that uh, we could learn more about DJ and so we'll we'll kind of evaluate that after these next few practices but he'll stay on defense throughout uh, until the end of Saturday and we'll make a decision. Yeah, it really has. Um, it was a slow process, to be honest with you, to start, and I knew it was going to be simply because uh, it's just it's such new terminology. I mean, football is not it's not reinventing the wheel. You know, you got to be able to block tackle, you got to be able to get off blocks and those things. But uh, uh, just our our, our terminology, uh, offensively, defensively, it's a foreign language uh, to anybody. It's not just coming here. We've gone anywhere to be a foreign language, and I. I knew that that would be a process, and um, the key is now these terms that we're using, these guys are understanding, and now our offense shifts and motions and trades an awful lot, and to, to know when to say the right thing, to know how to align correctly, those are the things that uh, we've spent most of our time on, both offensively and defensively, defensively is alignment and stuff, that um, now the last three practices, all the installation's been in, now we have another. Yesterday was just a day of football where there was no installation offensively, defensively. We'll still have the same thing for two more practices, so we'll kind of have a better feel for where we're at. But uh, absolutely, it's gone about what I thought. And that kind of leads into my um, second question. Um, one guy I, I believe everyone is interested in curious about is Skylar Thompson. We haven't been able to talk to him. He's out of class. But um, from day one till now, uh, how would you go about assessing um, maybe his uh, really pleased with uh, where Skyler's come from day one to where we're at now of, of continuing to 
to feel more comfortable in the system, to be able to make some calls on his own, to, to be able to change the protection, to be able to change a, a play, to be able to get out of something that uh, he knows probably isn't going to be uh, the best play and put us in a better opportunity to be successful. Uh, obviously, from a physical standpoint, he's got loads of ability to be able to run the football, uh, throw it uh, uh, from different platforms in the pocket, out of the pocket, but just uh, the mental side of the game and him visiting with Coach Mess and Coach Klein, I've been really impressed with because it's it's starting to slow down. And that's what you hope for uh, as we finish up spring is it's slowing down, but it can't just stop at the end of spring. All these guys got to continue to work on their own, not just getting bigger, stronger, faster, but um, looking at install notes, looking at some film from the spring so that they stay on top of their game. Staying in that, that quarterback room, a lot of people look at John Holcomb and they just kind of think that he's so big and, and he mm -hmm. looks like a quarterback that could be really impressive. How does a, a guy at his size fit into what you guys are trying to do right now? He's done a nice job. He's improved uh, quite a bit, especially I've seen a ton of growth with John the last probably three practices uh, where, once again, the game is starting to slow down for him and he's making um, some really good decisions. Uh, he's got great arm talent, as everybody knows, and ability to run the football now. It's just him seeing the pictures pre-snap and trusting what he sees pre-snap that, yeah, that is right. That's, that's the right picture I saw. Now let's make quick decisions and be able to deliver the football where it's supposed to be. Uh, and, and so in the last three practices uh, in particular, I've been really impressed with John. Uh, Coach, you mentioned at the start of this how you will go against an offense that won't run a lot of stuff you see, you see in the league. Like how do you how do you balance that to get ones versus one a chance for your offense to go against you know this defense but also knowing they're running stuff that you may not. Get. Yeah, you, you got to do a good balancing act on both sides because no matter what, uh, our offense if we're in a two tight end set has to be able to go against the one defense um, and, and see the right pictures and and we've we've helped each other out by, hey, can you get into this front for these five or six plays? Can you play this coverage for these, um, this period, whatever it may be? Uh, and then on the flip side, you know, defensively, uh, we've been doing some no huddle periods, which uh, our offense can always continue to work on just because of tempo and two minute and those things. But those have been really good for our defense to say, all right, it's going fast for six plays in a row. We got to be able to get lined up, get the call, and our offense. Can you give us this formation? Can you give us these plays? I think that's that's part of uh, the balance of, of of winning and playing together offensively and defensively. I've been impressed with just the coaches sharing information back and forth of, hey, we see more of this in this league. Can we give? Can you give us this? And um, it, it's been it's been good. Uh, it's it's a balancing act, and that's something as we get into fall camp. I'll sit down with, with Mess and Hayes and say, okay, what days do we want to designate for more of a defensive emphasis day? What days do we want emphasis for offensive emphasis with still getting good on good? Hey, let's just play football. We see the returning experience and, and some, some of these areas where, you know, people would have to step up, but in your estimation, which position groups <coughs> maybe have, have taken the jump and which ones are still kind of in well, I think all of them are in a sense of urgency mode just to see how much more we can, um, how much more information that we can uh, be able to hold on to and understand uh, as we finish up spring ball. Um, depth issues, obviously, running back is a concern. We have some depth issues. We're going to have to count on some, some young players probably coming in here. Uh, to at least give us an opportunity to see if they can compete. Uh, been really pleased with the depth we have on the defensive line, uh, which we thought was going to be a strength um, depth that we have uh, probably at the safety position. You know, we've got some guys that are injured that are that have limited action playing, you know, McPherson and, and Monty and those guys that we think will be in the mix, but they're not uh, out there yet. And then you throw Jonathan Alexander, that makes our safety position better. Marcus Hayes makes our safety position better. So we have some depth there, which we weren't sure of. Um, you know, but probably running back still a thin position for us. Uh, I, I still think the, uh, uh, the corner position is a little thin for us. Uh, and uh, in, in, oh, you get an injury and all of a sudden you're thin somewhere else. So we have to continue to push the guys uh, that are in the mix to, to make sure that they're understanding where they fit offensively and defensively because you can't go into a season with just 
um, two guys at a linebacker, two guys at a left tackle position. You have to continue to develop all the time. Yeah, um, James has probably been the most consistent, but he's the one that's made every practice. Uh, Harry's been nicked up a little bit. Tyler Burns has been nicked up a little bit. Um, James uh, came in really not knowing a lot about our system and, and uh, has picked things up really well. He's an extremely coachable guy. Um, I, I, he sees the hole and hits it. Uh, he's got to continue to work on pass protection, running routes and those things, but I've been really pleased uh, with James right now, uh, learning how to finish, finish runs, finish plays, and understand um, through Coach Anderson just where where he fits within our offense, and um, whether it's in a one back set or in in with a fullback, you know, it's he's still learning our terminology, our footwork, and those things. But uh, he works at it hard. Oh, it's fun because uh, that's the thing I so appreciate about Coach Hayes is he's not an ego guy. He wants he wants everybody's opinion, and that's when you get the most out of guys is when they're not afraid to say say something, knowing that they're going to have a valued opinion, and they're not just it's just uh, lips lip speak. It's it's more hey, let's what's the best thing for us? A lot of that stuff happens in my opinion on third down. You know. Where's our skill set? Do we have really good cover guys? Do we have more uh, better zone eyes guys? Who's our best rush guys? What are some things to beat this protection? Because, you know, we're going against our offense and we understand how they're protecting things. Okay, how do we beat that protection? You want to find out what the best things are to beat the protection with a bunch of different voices in the room because that's what every Wednesday and Thursday is like in the fall because things people and offenses pr protect things differently. And so it's fun to just have everybody's input. And I think that uh, we've got a bunch of veteran coaches in that defensive room and everybody um, has, has had coordinator experiences and, and has been in Power 5 football for an awful long time that uh, they, their opinion's really valued. Well, it, it's Stanton right now. Okay. Stanton's helping them right now as a graduate assistant. Uh, I go over there and spend some time with them as well. Um, Coach Riley uh, helps them when we get to PAT field goal. Um, but when he's talking about scheme, you know, with our kickoff, our, our kicker is a part of the scheme. Not only is he kicking it, but he has, you know, his third of the field, and he's got to understand where he's got to send the play back to. I mean, our our, our kickoff team is no different than our punt team it's another defensive snap and you have to know where you fit you just can't run aimlessly down the field and say I'm a part of the kickoff team or part of the punt team and so it's no different than defensive football just like kick return and punt return or more offensive football you have to make sure um, and, and detail the scheme and that's what he's probably talking about and we're we're probably a little ways away because we've spent so much time implementing the offense and defense that we know we've done a, we've done a nice job on special teams and, and Stanton's done a really good job of, of kind of taking ownership there. But we know we have a long ways to go once we get into fall camp. And um, Isaiah obviously not being able to go this spring, he was the leader in both the return areas last year. Is there anybody that either of those groups has been impressed in the return game? Well, because we're not going live on kickoff and punt returns, we're just getting guys back there to catch the football. Obviously, Marcus Hayes w was exceptional at New Mexico. We still haven't heard on his eligibility. Uh, Phillip Brooks, we think, is another uh, candidate back there. Um, we're trying a lot of guys just in, in catching the football. Um, we'll get into more of the, uh, the schematics, but we're obviously hoping Zubes is back 100% uh, ready to go. And, and I know that he's moving better. Uh, obviously, he's not going to be cleared until the summer, which we knew. We, we anticipated him having a full June and full Ju July to get himself ready. I'm sure every coach is, I guess, acclimated to, to the job position now. But watching Coach Riley yesterday, he really seemed pretty plugged in well with these guys, and he seemed to be really, I guess, in his element. Uh, how much fun is he to watch uh, coach? How much fun is he to have on your staff? Yeah. How much of a boost? Yeah, Rouse and I have known each other for a long time. I, th I think he's the best offensive line coach in the country. I've been around an awful lot of them. And I say that twofold. One, 
um, schematically, technique-wise, uh, all those things. Uh, there's a lot of great offensive line coaches out there. But the ability to connect with players, I've never seen anybody do it better than Connor uh, as far as challenging the heck out of those guys. And that's a position you are going to challenge guys. It's, it's the most fun guys to be around. They're, they're, they're the guys that uh, can take being challenged as long as they know they're loved and they know that they're cared about. And, and that's something that uh, I've seen Rouse in operation for six years, seven years now. And um, every one of those kids would run through a wall for Coach Riley. And they know that uh, he has their back and um, he's a great technician, but more than that, he's a great mentor to those guys. And it's fun because uh, I went and sat in an offensive, meeting, offensive line meeting on Saturday and they're locked in and he's challenging guys and asking questions. And then you go out and you, you know, it, it's so true. Your offense line is five guys, but boy, if they're not playing as one, you are in trouble. And so the communication that uh, those guys have to rely on a on a play-to-play -play basis is is pretty cool to watch uh, Rouse orchestrate. You mentioned that uh, cornerback was a was a position <coughs> maybe depth concern. I know Coach Malone's been joking about trying to steal Walter Neal yeah. uh, from there. What uh, I guess what's your depth at, at nickel? Well, Walter, experience, a, a playmaker. I think A.J. Parker's a really good player. Um, the, the issue we're having at corners, everybody else out there is typically in a red jersey, so they can't do anything full go. Uh, and um, we stuck Walter out there yesterday, in fact. We, in fact, we stuck Walt out there and said, you're going to be a corner today uh, because he's played so much nickel. It's still a position where there are similarities. If you can play corner, you need to play nickel. Now there's some... Uh, different fits. There's some different uh, calls that you're going to have to learn at nickel. Uh, Jonathan Durham's playing some nickel for us, but he has a red jersey on too, so we can't uh, have him go uh, in, in a live situation. That's where we were working Marcus Hayes a little bit yesterday. I was working with Marcus, um, but he has a red jersey on, so we're not allowed to go live with him. So we're just trying to right now move around as many guys that, that are have the skill set to um, be able to tackle at nickel, to be able to play really good man coverage, and be able to blitz. And those are three complements that you just can't throw a 165-pound corner in there, but you also have to have a skill set that you're going to be able to cover a, a Joaquin Gill or, or Phillip Brooks in the slot, and sometimes that's not a bigger safety. And so all of our corners, um, we're going to try at nickel at some point because uh, there's so, so much similarity between the two positions. We, we have right now, we wanted to give Lance something to just hang his hat on because we were trying him at nickel for half a practice, trying him at corner for half a practice, and I don't think it was very fair to Lance in the fact of uh, he was staying pretty average at both, and uh, and I've got great respect for, for Lance because he's a tremendous competitor, and and uh, we wanted to, for the last seven or eight practices, learn one position. Lance is going to be a really, really good football player here. Uh, he just needs a lot of repetitions, and he needs to uh, find one spot that he can, you know, uh, take ownership in. And so that's what we're doing right now with him. Switching gears a little bit, analytics have kind of crept into the football team. How much have you leaned on that before or anticipate such as when you do a four on four down and yeah, uh, it's it's big. Obviously, we didn't have as many resources probably at North Dakota State as we'll have here. It's something that we're going to look at more uh, in the summer as far as people that uh, and companies that actually uh, deal with those things. A lot of that is our own information as well. And, and some of that is still gut. Some of that is still how the game flow is going, you know, um, you know, what what the situation of it is. I mean, all those things play into it. Uh, but without question, it's become a, a big part of not just football, but all sports and, and uh, something that uh, I know this summer we're visiting with some people about. For a couple more. Um, I guess basic question here, but what can we expect on Saturday? You never had a spring showcase. This is your first time. What are, what are you More of a practice. Um, <laughs> simply this, and we talked about it. Um, we only have, I think, two active corners that are not in red jerseys, so we can't have a full scrimmage. We only have a couple of active defensive ends that are not in a red jersey. Um, and uh, so we, we want to be smart 
with our guys as far as, you know, we K-State's not on the schedule for us next year, so we want to make sure that we get our work done. So you're going to see a practice. You're going to see seven on seven. You're going to see a red zone period or a third down period. You're going to see some of our double rep period where you got young guys at one end and older guys at the other end to try to still get our work in because we still – we're still improving every day, technique-wise, fundamentals, schematics, all those things. And then based on how much time we have left, if we are in good shape, we'll scrimmage some young guys uh, a handful of plays. If, if we feel pretty good, we may have the older guys do what we would call a thud period and everybody stays up and the younger guys scrimmage a little bit. If we get somebody nicked up during that time, like has happened in a practice, then you kind of have to eliminate the scrimmage part. So, you know, you still have to get your horses to the fall, and that's something that uh, um, we need to keep, a, keep an eye on. You know what? I've been really, really impressed with Sammy. Um, r- gives us an element of, of speed there that uh, he's faster than the other tight ends that are playing. Uh, obviously, he needs to work on his on his run blocking. He's not afraid to do it. Uh, he has no habits to break because he's brand new at the position. So it's fun for Coach Mess because he gets to teach him from square run and from scratch. And you know, try to go out and block Wyatt Huber. You know, that, that's that's not easy to do. So uh, we're putting him in some positions to continue to push him on the run game, but he's a big weapon in the pass game if he continues to progress because he can run and he's got really good hands and now he just, like everybody else, needs to understand the system.